Hi, I'm Timothy Priscilla, and today I want to illustrate the technique of use substitutions for anti-differentiation for my Math 1325 class. And uh, remember, at this point, I've stated two uh, general antiderivative rules. The antiderivative of a number in terms of x is that number times x plus c, where c is any constant, and the antiderivative of x to power in terms of x. You're undoing that power rule for differentiation. Normally you take the exponent, multiply by the coefficient, and then subtract one. We're doing the opposite order, in opposite operation in the opposite order. So, we're going to add 1 to get the new exponent and then divide by that new exponent. And I suppose we could even have a third rule that I don't really state, but it should be obvious just from having uh, found derivatives that the antiderivative of the sum or difference of two terms, f of x plus or minus g of x in terms of x, you anti-differentiate the first term plus you anti-differentiate the second term. And I printed out some homework problems and thought I would use these homework problems to illustrate the uh, use substitution technique. In my opinion, this use substitution uh, technique for finding antiderivatives is the most uh, powerful of all the techniques that you'll uh, see uh, in for finding antiderivatives. And uh, if you were a math major and you were taking a, you know, a regular calculus course, you'd see a lot of different techniques. But for our purposes, this is it. This is the most powerful uh, technique of anti-differentiation that you're going to see. And Let's see, I've written down problems one through five on some notebook paper, and I thought I would just go through these five problems. Starting off, the antiderivative of two times two x minus six to the tenth power. The u substitutions are used to undo the chain rule or the generalized power rule. If you have a quantity raised to a power, then Try letting uh, u equal that quantity. So I'm going to try letting the thing being raised to the power is this 2x minus 6. I'm going to try letting u equal 2x minus 6. Then we're going to find the differential of u. In, uh, I'll go ahead and write this down. If u is equal to f of x, some quantity in terms of x, then du, the differential of u, is defined to equal f prime of x times dx. So in order to use the u substitution, you're going to have to uh, find derivatives as well. So du, what's the derivative of 2x minus 6? The derivative of 2x is just a 2. The derivative of that minus 6 is 0. Stick on the differential of x. Your goal should be to replace every factor containing x with something containing u. This first problem is tailor-made for a u substitution. 2x minus 6 is going to be replaced with just a u. And then look down here, 2dx. 2dx is going to be replaced with a du. So let's clean that up a little bit. The integral, the uh, indefinite integral or antiderivative of 2 times 2x minus 6 to the 10th dx. The 2 and the dx are going to be replaced with that green du. And 2x minus 6 is being replaced with that letter u to the 10th power. And we know how to anti-differentiate u to the 10th power. To anti-differentiate u to the 10th power, we're using this power rule here. You add 1 to the exponent. You divide by that new exponent. So that's going to give me u to the 10 plus 1 is 11. Divide by 11 plus my constant c. But the original problem did not have a u in it. The original problem had x's u is equal to 2x minus 6. So, 
my final answer then, I'm going to replace that u, get it back in terms of x. So I think I'll write it right here. Replace the u with 2x minus 6. We still have that 11 power out here. We have a denominator of 11, and what else do we have? We have that plus c for my final answer. 2x minus 6 to the 11th power divided by 11 plus c. Try letting u equal the quantity raised to the power. Then you find the differential of u. I'm reviewing now. If I'm uh, looking at a quantity raised to power and I'm trying to anti-differentiate it, try letting u equal the quantity that's being raised to the power. Then you find du. du is the derivative of that quantity. The derivative of 2x minus 6 is 2. Stick on the dx. And then this problem is tailor-made for what we needed. We needed a 2x minus 6 to be replaced with u. And 2dx... 2dx was replaced just by the differential of u. So all we had was u to the 10th du. I mean, you ought to anti-differentiate that. The next one. Mm, let me here. I'm going to draw a line to separate the problems. First thing I'd do is I'd rewrite that without a divided by. We need it just and we can have 56 times a quantity raised to power. Pick up the 7x plus 1. That becomes a negative 9 dx. Rewrite that divided by uh, quantity raised to the ninth power using a negative exponent. And then what's being raised to the power? If you have a quantity raised to power, then that's when you should try u substitution. So... Let me push that up some there. What's being raised to the power? 7x plus 1. So let's find du. Remember du. Du is equal to the derivative of 7x is 7. Stick on dx. That 7 came from differentiating 7x plus 1 and then times dx. Now let's look back at the problem. Uh, the only thing involving x is you, on, you don't have to get rid of that 56. If it's a constant factor, you're going to see that that takes care of itself. We can just leave that 56 where it is, okay? It'll take care of itself in a moment. But we have to get rid of the x factors. That means 7x plus 1 and dx. 7x plus 1, I'm going to replace with just a u. Well, all we have in terms of x is a dx. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get dx by itself. That's 7 times dx. To undo that multiplication, I'd multiply both sides by 1 -seventh. That's the same thing as dividing by 7. So we have 1 -seventh du is equal to dx. Now just watch what I'm doing here, okay? So we're picking up equals. There's my integral symbol. The 56, that, that's a factor, a numeric factor by itself. If you're wondering up here, suppose that had been something other than a 2. Suppose it hadn't been a 2, we picked up a 2. How would we handle that? Here's the technique that I'll use. The 56, the constant factor I'm writing down. That'll be taken care of in a moment. I have the 7x plus 1, that's going to become my red u. So I have u to the negative 9 power. The dx, the dx, here's the tricky part. The dx is going to be replaced with 1 7th times du. So the dx is going to be replaced with 1 7th times du. That constant factor of 1 7th I'm putting out in front of the integral symbol. The du I put at the other side. <coughs> Excuse me. 
So I let u equal 7x plus 1. I found du, but I had a 7 that I didn't have in the original problem. So what I do is I multiply by the reciprocal, and it's these two lines here and here. Those are the two lines that I use. 7x plus 1 became a u, so u to the negative 9. And then that dx I replaced with the 1 7th. I put that in front. I put the du out back. So now we're going to anti-differentiate. Well, 1 7th times 56, that's just an 8. Now we're going to anti we're going to anti-differentiate u to the negative 9. What do you do to anti-differentiate a variable to a power? You add 1. That's going to give me a new exponent of negative 8. And then I divide by negative 8. I still have that constant c. 8 divided by negative 8. That's working very nicely. 8 divided by negative 8 is just a negative 1, u to the negative 8, plus c. Now, if you type that into my math lab, they're not going to give you the correct answer because there was no u in the original problem. The original problem had x's. So we got to get it back in terms of x. We replace u. What was the value of u? 7x plus 1. So we're going to replace it. That's a negative. Replace u with that red 7x plus 1. For my final answer, the negative of 7x plus 1 to the negative 8 plus c. Now if you wanted to write that without a negative exponent, we wanted to write that without a negative exponent. There's my fraction bar. That's an assumed negative 1 on top. We move the 7x plus 1 down. That negative exponent becomes a positive exponent plus c. Either one of those would be acceptable final answers. Take a moment to look at that number 2. Oh, wow. As I turn around and look at the projector to see what I'm writing, boy, that looks messy. First of all, we had to rewrite it so that it was a number times a quantity to a power. We had to write it using a negative exponent. Then we let u equal the quantity raised to the power. We found du. That's the derivative of the quantity times dx. And then I needed to get I needed to get rid of 7x plus 1. So the first one was solved for 7x plus 1. That became a u. The only other thing containing an x was that dx. So I solved for dx. The dx was replaced with the 1 7th du. And notice how that works. That's going to be the pattern I use, OK? When I get a, uh, when I'm having to uh, solve for dx, that number I'll put all in front of the integral sign, the symbol on the left. The du will go on the right. And here's another one, number three. We know what to do when we run into I don't like the way they write that dx in the numerator. I would rather the dx be stuck out on the side, but that's how my math lab typed it here on number three. That's the one we're about to do, number three, this one right here. So they put the dx on top. I would have rather they have it like that, put the dx on the side, but they didn't. It's the same thing, though. Rewrite that square root using an exponent of 1 half, so that's a 9x squared plus 4 to the 1 half. And then what do I need to do? I need to get the 9x squared plus 4 out of the denominator. We're not going to have an antiderivative rule for quotients. There's no antiderivative quotient rule. So you can't just say, if, it were, if we were trying to differentiate this, we'd use the quotient rule. But there's no antiderivative quotient rule. All we can do is rewrite it 
18x, pick up the 9x squared plus 4, move it up top, and that becomes a negative 1 half. That's our definition of negative exponent. And now, we have a quantity raised to a power. Try letting u equal that quantity. u is equal to 9x squared plus 4. Then du is equal to, what's the derivative of 9x squared plus 4? 18x, don't forget your derivative rules, times dx. Oh, this is another one of those problems that couldn't have been rigged better. This one's really rigged nicely. And the previous problem, you know, when you found the du, the number you got there was not exactly that number there. So we solve for dx. Here, I think it's, I think this is working out really nicely. The 9x squared plus 4 is going to be replaced with the single letter u. The 18x dx, what's that going to be replaced with? 18x dx is going to be replaced with du. So let's clean this up. We have the integral. 18, well, first of all, 9x squared plus 4, that's going to become a u to the negative 1 half. The 18x dx, 18x dx, that's all going to be replaced with 1 du. 9x squared plus 4 became that single letter u. The 18x dx became just the du. And the antiderivative of u to the negative 1 half. Now let's start anti-differentiating. That's u to the add 1, negative 1 half plus 1. Negative 1 half plus 2 halves gives me a positive 1 half. Divide by 1 half. What else do I have? I have that plus C. And this is a compound fraction. I'll do what I was doing in the previous lecture videos. I'll multiply above and below by 2. So really all I have is a 2 u to the 1 half plus C. And if I tried to if I tried to type that into my math lab, they'd count it wrong because there was no u in the original problem. The original problem contained x's, so what do I need to do? I need to rewrite. Where I have a u, I need to write 9x squared plus 4. So that's 2 times 9x squared plus 4 to the 1 half plus c. My math lab would accept that. But we know that a 1 half exponent is the same thing as what? A 1 half exponent, yes, it's the same thing as a square root. So if this were, I want to write this because if this were a multiple choice problem, they may not have that form there. This might be what they have as the correct answer. Any questions? Okay. Coming back over here, I'm going to add to my list of antiderivative rules. We haven't looked at e's and ln's yet. The antiderivative of e to the x with respect to x is just e to the x plus the constant c. Remember the derivative of v to the x is e to the x. The derivative of that constant is 0. So that shouldn't be a surprise. And one more property. The antiderivative of 1 over x dx, 
What do you anti-differentiate to give you 1 over x? Should have been around the same time that we were anti-differentiating, I mean that we were differentiating e to the x. Okay, the natural log. Now to make sure that this argument is positive, I'll say of the absolute value of x plus c. Remember the, net law, the argument of a natural log can't be uh, negative if it's going to be a real number. Looking at number, looking at number four, looking at number four, there, let me push up some, there, there, looking at number four, here we don't have just an e to the x, if you have anything other than e to the x, if the exponent's anything other than just a single letter, then to anti-differentiate it, you're going to need a u substitution. Try letting u equal whatever the exponent is. Let u equal x to the tenth. For e to the power, if it's e to anything other than x, try letting u equal x to the, uh, whatever the exponent is, in this case x to the tenth. And now what's d u? You do, uh, differentiate x to the tenth. What's the derivative of x to the tenth? 10 x to the ninth times dx. So we look back up here at the problem. That x to the tenth is going to become just a single letter u. Well, we also have x to the ninth times dx x to the ninth times dx. What have we got here that we don't have in the original problem? Well, what do we not have? We don't have that 10. So multiply both sides by 1 tenth. So we have 1 tenth times du is equal to 1 tenth times 10, that's just x to the ninth dx. So, the exponent, x to the tenth, that's going to become just a single uh, letter u. The x to the ninth, dx, x to the ninth, dx, that's going to become a one-tenth du. Where did I say we put the one-tenth? We put it in front of the integral symbol, and the du, where did I say that goes? At the very end. So, let's clean this up some. We have a one-tenth, we have an e, the exponent is a u, and a du. Look back and make sure you understand what I did. I took u equal to the exponent, that gave me an x to the ninth. But it also gave me that 10. I didn't want that 10. So I divided both sides by 10. Multiplying by 1 tenth is the same thing. And so the x to the ninth dx became my 1 tenth du. That x to the tenth became my u. And we know what the antiderivative of u to a single letter is. The antiderivative of u to a single letter. The antiderivative of u to a single letter of u, pardon me. The antiderivative of e to a single letter. The antiderivative of e to a single letter is e to the single letter. So I wonder how many other times I'm saying stuff like that and saying the wrong letters on these. Well, sorry about that. The antiderivative of e to the u is e to the u plus my constant c. And the only thing we can anti-differentiate involving e is e to a single letter. The antiderivative of e to a letter is e to whatever that letter is. But my final answer shouldn't contain u, it should contain x's. So that's going to give me a final answer of 1 tenth e replace the u. What is u going to be replaced with? 
u is going to be replaced with x to the 10th plus my constant c for the final answer. And let's do another one involving E. Here's another one involving E. Well, we have E to something other than just a single letter, so that says we're definitely going to have to uh, use a U substitution. What do you think we'll set U equal to? You tell me, what do you think we should set U equal to? We should set u equal to whatever that exponent is. 6x squared plus 12x. And then finding du, we get du equals, what's the derivative of 6x squared plus 12x? It's a 12x plus 12. And what's that going to be multiplied by? dx. Remember, du is equal to the derivative of that quantity times dx. So that exponent up here, that's going to become just a u. Okay, so we'll get rid of that exponent. But any factor containing an x we need to get rid of. Here's a factor x plus 1. What could we do to pick up an x plus 1 here? Sort of been rigged, hasn't it? It's been tailor-made for us to do this. Multiply both sides by 1 twelfth. If you multiply both sides by 1 twelfth, you're going to get a 1 twelfth du is equal to, what's 1 twelfth times 12x plus uh, 12? Isn't that going to give me just an x plus 1 dx? So I'm going to have to use this first line and that line right there. I've already gotten rid of the exponent. That's going to be u. But I need to get rid of that x plus 1 times dx. x plus 1 times dx. Where's the 1 half going to go? The 1 half goes on in front of the integral symbol. Where does the du go? Out here at the end. So look at this. This is really going to reduce nicely. We have the integral symbol. 1 12. It's a 1 12. Y'all should have said something. Well, I wouldn't have heard you though because you're just watching a video. I wouldn't have heard what you said. So, but you're right. That should have been a 1 12th. So a 1 12th. The x plus 1 and the dx are replaced with the du. We still have an e to the u power. And what's the antiderivative of e to the u? The antiderivative of e to a single letter is e to the single letter plus c. So get the u back in terms of x. Remember u is equal to 6x squared plus 12x. I always have that plus c. for my final answer. Let u equal, when you're dealing with e to powers, let u equal the exponent, unless it's just, the exponent's just a single letter. Find du, then uh, do whatever it takes to pick up the uh, remaining factor of x dx. And remember the way I take that constant term, I put it in front. I take the du, I put it at the end. So x plus 1 and dx are gone. They're replaced with 1 twelfth du. And I still had e to the u power. So hopefully the, you're beginning to feel a little bit better about these u substitutions. And I'm going to take a break and go to lunch. Bye-bye.